Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. I'm uh, Ron. Okay, so what we're going to talk about for today's agenda is we're going to talk about how to define critical roles and how to allow assignments and tasks uh, assist you. Uh, we're going to talk about how to identify talent to fill the different roles that are critical for executing your business. Uh, we're going to talk about scheduling resources a little more efficiently, as well as achieving organizational objectives uh, during some times of, of slow growth. So when we talk about a resource plan overall, the first thing we talk to customers about is how do we define a list of generic resources uh, that we can use in that process? And, and generic resources are really a key ingredient to a successful resource management uh, plan. Um, I'm sure everyone on this webinar uses them. Um, one of the key elements of a generic resource is the ability to align them with a job code. Uh, we generally recommend a one-to-one -one relationship, although it's not a requirement where you create your generics and they also align to job codes. And the benefit of uh, generics and uh, aligning the job codes or including a job code is that job code becomes that key uh, element that is common to both the generic as well as to users. So later in the presentation, we'll talk about swaps or searches and if you have your generic set up correctly, those become much more powerful uh, for you to be able to uh, align your generic resources with the types of uh, named resources that uh, you may be able to use in your projects. So once we do have that well-defined list of generics, um, then what generally what we see customers doing is creating kind of some templates. Uh, project plans and those templates and we control control uh, excuse me include phases tasks as well as the generic resource um, they can include uh, expected hours uh, for those resources as well um, and that becomes the starting point for your project management it's really a good for project pre-sales planning uh, as well as for capacity reporting as well so and we'll talk a little bit about that in the next few slides. What we're seeing a lot lately is the transition from generics on task assignments. Uh, how do we create bookings um, through a more automated fashion than manual? Um, so there's a few options that we're seeing out there by taking those uh, projects, those proposed projects, and being able to generate a set of bookings from the project plans using dates, using uh, hours, using those generic resources. Um, if you're using booking approvals, whereas you are creating bookings and then submitting them for approval, uh, there's actually an automated out of the box way to take a project plan and generate uh, a set of bookings from generics on task assignments. Now, one thing to note, it does only work for generics. So if you were to, for example, swap out your project manager for a named resource on your proposed project plan, because you know who your PM is going to be, um, and you go to create, use that create option, it will ignore the project management and only create bookings for the generics. So the thought there from OpenAir is, you have your project plan, you have the different types of resources you're going to need, the amount of effort, the dates. And now I'm going to go ahead and create the requests uh, to my resource team uh, for those uh, as an automated fashion. Uh, so there is a box that you can enable and it shows up. But again, it does require a booking approval process. If you don't use booking approval, which a lot of companies don't, then you don't have a lot other options. So um, we have uh, built some uh, customizations or scripts in the scripting center to take the project plans and convert those to bookings. And we've done several different times now we've done this in, in several different ways. You know, it depends on a lot of the dependencies are, are you booking to a project? Are you booking to a task? Um, is it a, just a create only or is there a sync back in any way? So those are sort of the business discussions that we've had with customers 
on the best way. It also may require some custom fields. So you can see here, for example, in my assignment, I've got a custom field for start and end date because those are inherently at the project, at the task level, not at the assignment level. And so some of these, uh, some of these will require some setup and some configuration as well as building out a script. But uh, it's more and more common that we're seeing where customers want to take that project plan full of generics, get it set up, ready to go, then you know, be able to automate that creation of bookings. However, there is another option um, and it's a recent option um, within the last couple of releases and you do have to be on UI4 to be able to utilize this feature, but there's this concept of a project center. Um, the, from my understanding and what it looks like they're heading is the project center is sort of the marrying of the project plan and bookings. And what you're able to do today, and this is each release, they have been enhancing this option. So I expect it's gonna to continue to go um, that way. Uh, but you're able to basically create bookings um, within the project center within the project. So once you turn on the project center, there's a couple of switches that are needed to enter, enable it in your account. Um, and one of them allows the project center booking worksheet to be enabled. And so what this does is you're able to then uh, create your project structure uh, as we've been discussing, and then you're able to go to the project center and now you can start to request or set up bookings for your generic resources uh, at the project level or even down to the task level. And you can see how many hours are planned for the project versus how many hours are booked for the project or at the task level, you're able to see the same data. And so um, you could do a couple of different ways. Um, it will allow you to only do weekly if you're entering it uh, into the grid. So you can set a booking type. You can also enter weekly amounts uh, for that resource. Um, but there's also, an, and this is very recent, um, there's also the ability to do an add booking. And if you click the add booking next to uh, the resource, um, it will basically open up the booking form from the project center. And now you can basically book just like you would any other way. You would book to a project or book to a task, you'd book a resource, a start and an end date, and then the number of hours um, or percentage in between those dates. And then once you create and save that, um, it will still split in this view, it will show that data on a weekly basis. So if you spend say 40 hours over a three week period, then you once you hit save, it will show it in the booking worksheet as a third, a third, a third of the 40 hours in each week between the start and end date. And then from there, you just like within a worksheet in the resource module, you can continually modify the bookings each week by editing them. Uh, here in this uh, grid. So it's, it's a really nice way to create the bookings from the project uh, without leaving the project module, but also see those bookings uh, compared to your project plan. This really aligns well if you are booking to a task uh, because it does give you that compare view at a task level, uh, which can be really helpful. So uh, this is something that um, I think will continue to grow and get more and more uh, scalable and powerful. Uh, I use this today for my projects as I get new projects in, I go to the book project center and create those generic placeholders based on when I think the project's going to start and the effort I think it's going to take for each type of resource. And then we modify from there as the project goes um, <clears throat> from proposed into uh, closed one. So I think that, you know, for those of you that are um, looking at this option, again, there's a couple of switches, but it could be a, a good option without a customization or without requiring approvals, uh, kind of a good in-between option. Once you do create the bookings um, and you have those generic bookings, now there's a few, uh, you know, kind of ways you can convert those into named resources. Um, as I mentioned early, uh, you can use job codes to do a substitution. Uh, so as long as your generics have job codes, your users share the same set of job codes, uh, you can come in to a different, couple of different ways. So what you're seeing in my screen here is a list view of the bookings. Um, and within each one, you can select uh, the little uh, magnifying glass and it will bring up a substitute page and it will show you 
all the resources that are match that job code um, and it'll show you their availability based on the dates within the booking. So a quick and dirty way to say, I need an engineer. Let me look at all my engineers and let me see who's best fit. And then I can, from there, I can click on the little icon underneath the engineer I'm selecting and it will do a swap of the generic resource for the named resource. So one way to you know, quickly identify a, a, a resource <clears throat> Another way is to within the different resource views. So, uh, you know, we're looking for resources that have availability. You can use a couple of different views. The chart view is one of my favorites. Uh, it does give you that visibility as to who's available, who's unavailable, who's overscheduled, who's underscheduled. Um, and you, you have to make sure that that view is set up correctly. There are some settings that allow you to control the date parameters, that allow you to see the data in a much cleaner way. So there are some uh, recommended setup um, the first time you use that chart. And one of the things you can do is once you do set the chart up, if you wanna set it up on a, on a company-wide basis, you can set it up and then you can push those out using a bulk wizard uh, to all the resources. So that's a nice way to be able to Make sure that everyone is looking at the same data. You can customize the color coding. One tip trick here is if you're looking to use white, white is not a natural color coding in the, but if you use the hex code 6F, so FFF, FFF, uh, that will use white. And I generally set that as my available flag. So I can see where there's no color, I know that there is flexibility. The resource planner is also rare, not fairly new, um, but it's been around for a couple of years now. And it's another way to look at the data. Um, you can see at a top level percentages of availability or uh, scheduling. Um, and also it auto highlights any overages as well. So I can see you know, who's over scheduled, who has availability. You can then drill down from here into the projects to see which projects make up the uh, percentages on a, you know, whether it's on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, depending on how you configure the view. Um, there's also additional drag and drop um, with this feature, which is really nice. So if you do need to move things around or you need to extend the booking, you can either drag and drop uh, from the Gantt looking view. You can also do inline editing for start and end dates um, right within the, the planner itself. So that's a nice, uh, a nice uh, way to do it. You have color coding for the different booking types as well as the different overages and those can be edited. And then not only can you see from a resource perspective, uh, but if you wanna look at it from a customer perspective, you do have the ability to convert this view into a client view. So now I can see the client, the project and all the resources that are scheduled to my project and how they align uh, with the, uh, with, uh, the project plan. So again, it's a good way to be able to identify if you know, you know, generally if your resources are similar and you know who, uh, you know, and you're just looking for availability based on a new project coming in, the chart view, the resource view are great views for quickly identifying available resources. If your resource pool is much more complex and the requirements are not, and run resources not similar to another um, and you specialize in multiple products maybe or multiple technologies um, in different regions, different groups, then you may wanna use open air's profile options. Whereas you can then set up uh, resource profiles, have resources go in and assign those profile elements to them whether, um, you know, am I an expert in uh, coding HTML or am I a beginner? Do I know JavaScript, et cetera? So you build out those databases of elements and they don't have to be just technologies. They can be anything. You can search by willingness to travel or language. Um, so those are all, uh, you know, all options. Once you do create those profiles and then once you do assign those profiles to the resources, uh, now they become very powerful to be able to search on. There's a few different search options. You can do a quick search. 
which basically says, show me everybody who has, who's an expert in Java and lives in the US. Uh, so you quickly pick those profile items, you click save, and it will give you a list of everyone and kind of show you, you know, who's got availability and who is scheduled. So it'll give you a little utilization information. You can do a custom search, which is a, a more in-depth search. So the custom search allows you to actually filter the same by the different uh, technologies or, or however your profile is set up. But you can also now factor in other elements like availability. So let's say I'm looking for someone between this date and this date that has 40 hours available. Um, so it'll look at all the other bookings on the schedule or any uh, time off. And it will give you a, a list of folks that meet the criteria that have the best fit from an availability perspective. So it, it adds another layer. You can search by inactive resources as well um, and, and some other elements in the search. And then the most powerful search is the advanced resource search. So uh, this is a pretty cool search. It allows you a little more flexibility. You can, um, you can save the search parameters after you create it. You know, you can search, you can use uh, entity tag. You can search hourly cost as part of the equation if you're looking uh, for specific cost factor as part of your decision making. Um, you can make some of the uh, requirements optional, some of them um, profile elements required. Um, so it gives you a little more uh, flexibility and more options to search um, and find the right resource. Um, and so as you're entering your criteria, it actually starts calculating who is a good fit and will start giving you a number of resources that match. And as you keep adding, it will subtract uh, folks from that until you're done with what you need look and you come up with an acceptable number of candidates that meet the requirement. And then from there you get the output and they will you know, give you a star version of who matches best uh, the, the search. So another way, great way to use the profiling in open air against the searching. And um, entity tags is another benefit there. If you're using entity tags and being able to include those in your search. Um, this is also a, a cool feature um, that you can use. Let's say you've got three candidates that all uh, are good fit and you want to kind of compare them to each other to see which is the best option. Um, so here you can use what's open air calls the, can, the compare view. And so from here you can add folks, subtract folks, um, you can enter your know, availability that you're looking for and then be able to uh, use this to compare uh, folks profiles, what skill sets they have, what availability they have, um, you know, any other elements that you are tracking at a user level. Uh, so the compare uh, gives you flexibility to be able to remove folks, add new folks. Um, and be able to uh, see this data right, uh, right, at, right at your fingertip. So um, cool, a cool option as well for being able to identify uh, the right resource. Once you do uh, find the right resource, um, there is an option for a, a personnel option um, under personnel in the project there's a team link you can expose. Um, if you don't see it, it generally means it's not enabled at the, that particular project stage. So if you enable it in that project stage, um, you'll see under personnel team. And what the team allows you is it kind of shows everyone who's assigned to the project and everyone who's booked to the project. And then, so let's say uh, in my example here, Amy is booked as the project manager, but she hasn't, we haven't gone through and converted the uh, generic resource task assignments to Amy. So I, using this team method, I can click on the project manager, I can substitute for Amy um, and then click OK. And then what'll, I'd see if I go back to my project plan, it will have swapped the project manager generic for the named resource and on all the tasks where Amy is, uh, where the project manager uh, generic was staged. So 
So a great way to be able to go through and assign uh, your book resources to your generics and do a quick swap out within the project plan and be able to uh, do that in an automated fashion without having to go task by task. So you've got all the resource processes down. Now I want to see the output of all the data, right? So obviously putting together a good resource comprehensive plan, uh, but then you want to be able to see what are the kind of key reports that we see customers benefiting from uh, as you are um, you know, running your professional service organization. Obviously, first on the list is utilization, but utilization can mean a lot of different things, right? So utilization can mean availability. It can mean uh, our people on the bench. Um, so, you know, we can you know, define the different utilizations, um, how billable are folks is the most probably common utilization KPI we see. Uh, being able to look at time. So as people are putting their time in, how do I look at the different time categories across different projects, right? And then how do I identify where I may have uh, availability? Uh, of resources that may be able to go through uh, either train other folks because they're got downtime or folks that might need training um, in other areas when while they're not busy, we can take advantage and try to get them trained on other skill sets. So utilization in open air, you can do it by percentage, you can look at it by hours. Um, you know, the, this is a particular report um, is looking at different percentages. Um, I'm sorry, it's looking at different probably hours. Um, but anyway, it's color coded. So looking at where people are over scheduled, under scheduled, or scheduled at the right uh, level uh, in this report. So you can quickly kind of see where uh, you have issues uh, looking forward or availability. So again, another way uh, to be able to pull that data quickly. Um, looking at bench time, there is a value um, that is available base schedule hours for bookings. And what this means is, uh, assuming people, let's say, have a work schedule of 40 hours, and let's say they're booked for 25 hours, um, what this value would return is they are available for 15 hours to be booked. So it basically shows how much availability or bench hours do you have moving forward. Um, if you're overscheduled, you're greater than 40, then you will see negative number in here, as you can see in line one. <clears throat> but you can see, for example, in line three, you know, uh, Andrea has 10 available hours for bookings uh, the week of 729, five the next week, et cetera. And so it's another good way to be able to see availability um, and, and have, be able to see how much uh, capacity you have across your team. As I mentioned, being able to report time analysis is really critical. You know, how are we doing versus billable hours versus non-billable hours? Are there any other categories? You know, a lot of customers will track how much time people are spending doing pre-sales uh, or sales support work. Uh, you have the option of productive utilization or productive hours uh, as well. And so, you know, generally the way that we see these categories come together is using task types. Uh, within a task. So task types uh, get set at the task level. Uh, and again, you can define those categories, how you want those time uh, buckets to look. And then once you, and then you can create custom calculations uh, that bundle uh, all the time entered against billable task, all the time entered against non-billable task, and then be able to uh, add those different time views to a, a summary report. And again, really powerful, be able to quickly see, you know, how, how are my folks doing against what they're supposed to work or actual schedule versus what they're doing, billable, non-billable, et cetera. And uh, you know, a lot of companies also use utilization as we do for bonusing their employees. And so being able to bring all that data together for bonus reporting as well uh, is another key element of uh, being able to do time analysis. And then profile analysis, you know, this is where I mentioned, you know, it's good to be able to constantly look to see who's got what skills and who could maybe benefit from cross, cross training if they have availability. And 
And so you can run a, there's an advanced report called resource profiles. Um, and then this will basically, if you're using the profile feature, export that data uh, so that you can do some analysis to see, okay, you know, Trey is a uh, seven year, four to seven year integration manager expert. Uh, I might have folks on this list that don't list integration manager as a skill at all. You know, maybe if I've got availability from Trey and other and the resources that could benefit from that cross training, I can use this report to identify who we can get uh, some more training to so we can start to build them up to adding this to their profile. So that now as work comes in, I've got a more diverse uh, workforce that has uh, cross trained in different areas. So. Look for opportunities. Uh, if there are, is there's downtime as there was last year for sure, but is there downtime in the future? You know, this is another good way to be able to make sure you're you're benefiting from that downtime, even if you're not able to be uh, billing your customers. So, in summary, it's important to understand your organizational needs, be able to segment your different job codes and generic resources against the types of resources. Be able to make sure you have a good use model for the resource module. And, and next, on the next webinar, we're going to cover kind of what different models that we see. Uh, but I tell customers, you know, a good resource plan, a good resource model is as much process as it is tool. So being able to align open air as a tool to your overall resource methodology uh, and benefit from all the different features and views of the data you have. Make sure your processes support scalability. Um, so you don't want to bog down or, or create uh, choke points in the process. So um, it's important to look at that process, look at the resources responsible, and make sure you have um, a good process that you can continue to grow as you add new resources and add new uh, customers. And then obviously take action and then um, being able to evaluate all the data and take action. So, you know, if you are struggling with a resource module, if you're struggling with a resource process that works for your business, you know, obviously TopStep has lots of experience uh, working with customers to help them optimize their resource uh, management needs. So we're happy to help if, uh, if we can. So that's my presentation for today. Uh, please feel free to visit our website. All of these recordings will be posted there and, and, and or posted there. We've got quite a library of uh, details. We love to share our experience with the public. So feel free to uh, hopefully find something that you can uh, benefit from.